Hey, good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue. We're here in Grung Zone 6B in New England, and I think it's about time I gave you all a proper garden tour. Come on along. So this is the main part of the garden. This is where I do all my annuals, handful of perennials in here. Um, this will be our third summer gardening here is that right yeah this will be our third summer gardening here um, once upon a time this was a little smaller the potato patch and the strawberry patch and the garlic patch over here these are late additions to the garden they were second year additions um, and the hops over there that is also a very recent addition just check this girl out. These are our hops and uh, they ran out of room last year at the tippy top of this trellis that you can no longer see. So Lib and Bill ran some strings over to the greenhouse and uh, it was doing pretty good. It was doing pretty good and then it got pretty heavy. So Lib put together this little bit of stuff to hold that string up. So we will probably uh, be harvesting hops I think we harvested them like late summer last year. So starting in July, we're gonna keep an eye out for them. Garlic will be ready like July, August. Pretty stoked about that. And strawberries are starting to come in. My strawberries are really, they're, they're just blushing right now. Um, where you see bright red, it's these rocks. I'm trying to train the birds to stay out of my strawberry patch. It's, um, so far so good, but I don't really have ripe strawberries yet to put that against. This wood sorrel, it just loves growing in here with these strawberries. Pull some of that out of here. This is wood sorrel, um, and you'll see little yellow blooms sometimes. Here you go. These are the little yellow flowers that it produces. It's often mistaken for clover. Um, you can eat this. It's got kind of a lemony flavor to it and you can make a tea out of it as well. I just don't want it busting up my strawberries. Potatoes are doing pretty good. I'm super excited about them. As they've been getting taller down here, I've been taking pieces of these old straw blocks and kind of gathering it around the roots. The idea is that you want to keep the roots really dark, otherwise your potatoes will get green on them. These with the purple on them, oh my goodness, I just love them so much. I like to call this the cheese sandwich garden because it's got the two triangles on the sides. These are my pumpkins and I'm not sure if they hate this soil or not. The very centers look like they're the right color, um, but then they're yellow on the outside. I did just split these, so it may be a little bit of shock from that. They came in a clump, like sometimes you get at the store. So I've, I had three clumps of four each. So I finally got those separated out and I'm, I'm keeping, keeping them all crossed, hoping these recover. Can see my pride and joy. Y'all, I love growing peas. I love to eat peas, but look at these beautiful flowers. These are going to be sugar snap peas. So this whole row will be the sweet ones, the shelling peas. And I want to show you my favorite shelling pea. Look at this. This is a blossom on a King Tut purple pea. And the pods will be like a dark aubergine. Will you check out these freaking mushrooms? Um, Mike called them LBMs, little brown mushrooms. Um, they're not for eating. This is a smaller mushroom than we had all over the place last year, but it's still really cool to see them. When you've got mushrooms like that, it's a really good indication of uh, mycorrhizal inoculation in the soil. And you're looking at good soil that is alive and teeming with fungi and bacteria and all that good stuff. The onions seem to be doing okay. 
um, I came through and I pulled out a whole bunch of hay, like you do. I'm probably going to top these this weekend and let them just continue to do their thing. I also put in cucumbers over here. So we're trying a whole bunch of different things with cucumbers this year, and we'll see what works best. Y'all are probably looking at this like, what's going on? Um, there are, it's kind of hard to see, there are a handful of sweet potato slips planted up in here. Um, but they don't look great. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. Oh my gosh, there's just so much yarrow. I think I'm gonna split this and get some of it over to Mike. We were talking about that today. This is either wild bergamot or hummingbird mint doesn't really have much of a, a scent to it but it's nice this will this will have pretty flowers this is anise hyssop yes it is anise hyssop is so cool it tastes like licorice i mean the name anise implies but mm. and you can eat the flowers too it's like this big blast of anise and it's sweet it's sweet. It's nice. Over here we've got our asparagus fern swaying in the wind. And I put in some flowers that I really liked and a little bit of rosemary at the back. And we'll see how it does. I know you can hear that rosemary screaming for me to take it back. But, you know. Um, my celery is down here, but it may be getting eaten up. This was not encouraging. But we'll see how it does. We'll see how it does. And over here... I put in a little more uh, rosemary in here. Got Siam Queen Thai basil. Um, I don't know what kind of squash these are. They are probably zucchini. Probably zucchini. Uh, that's a sunflower. And a little bit of dill. This box is really a mixed bag, but honestly, that's one of my favorite ways to garden is to just mix it all up. These are, well, not that, that's a nasturtium. Um, and that is two. These are red wing onions. Just a handful of them. And uh, these also are just about ready to be topped. This is, this is bee balm. And this should be some red echinacea coming back. This is a perennial. Actually, they're both perennials. Uh, there's another clump of bee balm over here. And I'm really hoping that they attract our beautiful pollinators. Last year, we got visits from hummingbird moths, and it was so freaking cool. Charred, like you do. Last year, these arches were all covered in beans. And this year, I'm going to try something a little bit different. I have planted some cucumbers down here. On this left-hand arch, I put in beans this season on both sides and then the right hand arch hey hey I put in some cucumbers and it looks like they might just make it these peppers are jalapenos we think we hope there's been that weird banana pepper thing happening um, but they look like jalapenos right Dude, I'm still pulling thistles out of everywhere from last year. This is not a thistle. This is borage. And you can tell the edges aren't pointy and, and ouchy. We should have beautiful blue flowers coming up out of that once it gets taller. There's more red echinacea over here. I put some beet starts into our hay bales and we're keeping an eye on them. I don't know how well this experiment is gonna work out, but we're just gonna follow the season and see where it goes. The dye garden is doing so much better. Y'all remember when it was all scraggly and sad? We have gotten some good rain lately and it's certainly helping. These are resina calendula. Um, ooh, what's going on here? I don't know if this is about to pop or what's going on with it, but wow. That's super interesting. Here's another borage. Toma, tomatillo. And there's 
There's another one right there. More peppers over here. Down here, I do have some sweet potato slips in and we're rooting for them super hard. Um, but these are fava beans. Isn't that a beautiful flower? Uh, let's see, Ooh, we got, looks like we got one that's, that got pollinated. It's got pollinated. Looks like these got pollinated. Pulling the remains of the blossoms off of these, um, so those will those will grow into little bean pods. We've got some bugs on the other one, so I'm just gonna stay away from it. Um, it seems to be the trap plant, but it's also got some beans coming in on pods. Over here, I planted even more beans. I put in our dry beans. I think they're pinto beans. And then in here, in front of the ring, I've got some bush beans coming in. There should be, they might be wax beans. Um, I really wanted to grow wax beans this year, so I believe that's what I put in. I've got two or three rows of them in a semicircle. I, I think there were three rows, yeah. One, two, three. Not yet decided what I'm gonna do with this space in here. We did have arugula. I think that the wood chips were just too much for it. I think we might have suppressed the arugula. Um, so that may be something that I'm re-sowing this year. If you have anything that you think I should be growing, let me know about it. So walking out of the garden over here, it is primarily a big field of mint uh, with that bronze fennel in there. But my Purple echinacea is getting ready to bloom. These ones in front are in really good shape. These ones in back are always kind of weird and scraggly and they're like the allergy kid of my echinacea. It's a little bit of oregano back there um, and more mint. I'm gonna start pruning some of this soon, bringing it in for tea, for seasonings, for cooking with. We've got some creeping thyme here. Such tiny, delicate little blooms all over it. This is the side of the house, and this is where I put the tomatoes this year. We're gonna need to put trellising up for these indeterminates. Got them all sort of leaning on each other over here. I'd like to get those arch trellises in this week if I can. There's more of these. I planted marigolds in there. Someone told me that if I plant marigolds, the smell keeps away some bugs. Oh, hey, look at that. Got fruit already coming in. Aren't these marigolds just great? I love the deep red. I got the bloodiest looking marigolds I could possibly get while I was at the garden center. There's a slicer here that I'm keeping an eye on. It came with the plant, like the plant was already developed and had that fruit on it when I got it. So we'll see, we'll see. Oh, hello, 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 what are you? Oh, somebody ate you. Yuck, somebody took bites out of that, but this one looks good. What variety are you? You are, this is something called a tumbler tomato and I, it's a small, Tomato, it usually goes in a pot. The grapevines over here, my tractor supply grapes are doing really, really well. Um, they're gonna, they've just started to bud. We should get flowers soon. And hopefully, 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 hopefully this year we'll have good pollination and we'll have grapes. Still have a bunch of work to do out here. You'll see I've still got plants in pots. Um, but it's it's coming together back here. I couldn't be happier. Let's see what this um, shady bit back here looks like. The May apples, this is so interesting. These May apples are all like down to the ground here. Um, I don't know what that indicates, but I hope they're okay. Uh, the bloodroot is looking just fantastic. It's got to have doubled in size since I put them in. And these are golden seal over here. I have another one I've got to get out of the pot. 
Um, but these two look like they're doing really, really well. That, my friends, that is an asparagus. One very long asparagus. Fluffy. These are Elfin Blumet. Thank you so much, viewer, who let me know what these are. I just love that name. Apparently, in German, it's Elf Flower. Um, they're, I planted as many of these as I possibly could. They're just so pretty. The hosta is coming in just beautifully, and the bells. I'm watching these raspberries just absolutely explode. This has been super exciting this year. Everything's just loaded with fruit ripening up. And, uh, I hope the birds leave us some. I want to make some jam. I mean, really, this is, this is luxe to see something like this. We've had a little bit of a battle with rust this season. Um, I've been pulling it out as I see it. And that seems to be keeping, keeping the worst at bay. Um, but we are being pretty vigilant about it. And like, for example, right here, I'm just gonna pull that out of there. Here's another one. This particular raspberry vine with the small leaves, um, actually it might be a blackberry vine. This one in particular seems to be more susceptible to the rust than anything else that's in here. Um, it's just a variety of raspberries and blackberries. I put in uh, boysenberries down here and behind it are those yellow raspberries, the Queen Anne's. Um, but yeah, so these ones with the smaller leaves seem to be most susceptible to that, to that rust. We also have a lot of wild berries around here. Um, so to the side of the chicken coop, also tons of fruit coming in. Let me show you. That guy over there, I believe is a blueberry bush. There are three or four very tall blueberry bushes around here. And the rest of it are these black raspberry bushes. And they are just waiting to be pollinated. These beautiful things. Um, and they make the tiniest little blackberries that are incredibly sweet. So I'll definitely be picking back here this year too. Yes. Hello, baby girls. How are your sunflowers? I feel like they're looking pretty good. Came back here and just seeded some sunflowers. Oh, that's not a sunflower. That might be a curcubit of some sort. Um, but yeah, so I seeded this, I seeded this up with sunflowers and they took really well. You can see where the sunniest spot is right over here because they're the tallest over here. This is that um, wine caps patch that we had put blue hits in and it's doing really well. I missed this last flush, but I have another flush in the kitchen in the crisper ready to can. Um, but these folks are all back. And you can see there is just a ton of plantain. So hold tight, we're gonna make some salve this week. Oh, you don't belong here. I don't know what you are, but you don't belong here. And these are my little guys that I grew from seed. They're gonna be a bit behind these guys that came from big crowns, but that's okay. It just means that we'll have these guys, we'll have the, the purple asparagus, Trust me, when they come up, they're purple. The year before, we'll have the Mary Washington asparagus. Blueberries are very nearly in season. We have fruited a little bit here, um, and we're waiting for them to get ripe. And then over here, and Mike and I went out foraging yesterday, and there, everything's right on the same track, so we will for sure have jam this year. And random act of daisy. The spider wart is all closed up because it's going to rain. Zebra grass. The bleeding hearts are just about finished. 
they're starting to produce seed pods and those will ripen and then it should reseed itself as well as come back. Plucky peanut bucket that no longer has peanuts in it. Spinach is doing great. You've got that one carrot going on there. Super stoked about it. Um, over here, I've got a whole bunch of things that I need to put in the ground. The drift roses, also known as multiflora, on this side of the house are already starting to open up. So pretty. These smell great too. Okay, this bed uh, right now is mostly sunflowers. I have seeded red sunflowers, autumnal colored sunflowers, um, and red popcorn. That's what's going on here. And black mustard which is coming up in a few places. So I'm hoping that by the middle of the season, this is big and lush and full of dark colors. Up here in the front of the house now, and just kind of reveling in these beautiful catmints at the end of my walk here. See these bumblebees? They are just, we're, we're just sick with bumblebees. There are so many in here. And we have some more echinacea coming in over here. It's pink. This guy's just starting to, just starting to bloom. And these beautiful little orange whatevers they are. Delphinium is back for third round. And these poppies. These are Icelandic poppies and I am absolutely just gaga for them. So pretty. Look at these guys. This one's brand new. Brand new. Finally got the porch boxes set up over here. Put in some begonias and some coleus. And mm, I might have killed that plant. So that's where we're at halfway through June here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. Thank you for coming along and hanging out with me in the garden. I'll catch you up soon. Take care. What you doing, Lyric? Doing okay? We've had some wins with Drummer on the milk stand. We're getting trained up in there. It's been pretty cool. Additionally, I've gotten Piper in here a couple of times. Um, just to get her accustomed to the idea. Uh, she seems to feel like we could leave <laughs> every time I open that gate, so gotta be careful.